but we have uh, worked on about three years. So we recently finished uh, MyLocks deployment in our biggest database called UDB. So I'm talking about the deployment stories and uh, what we are planning to next. So first I'm going to talk about MySQL at Facebook, then MyLocks overviews, and how we deployed in production, then in the last uh, I'm going to talk about futures. So at Facebook, so we have a very big database uh, called the UDB, uh, which is a user's database. So on, in UDB, uh, we store uh, almost all Facebook activities. For example, when you like or you like or comment to somebody's uh, post or making friends, so these Facebook activities are stored in MySQL database. So MySQL database is uh, massively sharded, so apparently single MySQL instance is not enough to serve uh, billions of Facebook uh, people. So we have a huge record cache in front of MySQL, so which is called Tao. Uh, that cache tier mostly uh, hits, uh, the read request hitting uh, Tao, but if cache misses, then it goes to MySQL database. And also, all write requests uh, go through to MySQL. So if MySQL is slow, then this affects the people's uh, experience at Facebook. So the UDB, so MySQL database, has to be fast enough. So we take uh, care uh, to make it fast and reliable. And we don't MySQL uh, run on cloud, so we uh, don't have a AWS or Google Cloud uh, backup or any other monitoring capabilities. So we do by ourselves, like uh, automated master failovers or recoveries or provisioning or backup or restore. So these common uh, DBA activities are automated. And last point is, uh, this is the main motivation of why we started MyRox project. So we use pure flash storage, so uh, PCI Express uh, flash drives. So apparently hard disk is slow, that's so too slow for serving uh, users to, to running on UDB. So we replaced uh, with pure flash uh, years ago. So the pure flash is fast, but it's still uh, pretty expensive, especially on the server grade. The server uh, SSD is pretty expensive. And we are co pretty much constrained by space, uh, not by uh, CPU and IOPS. So, so saving space was pretty important for us. So what is MyLogs? So MyLogs is uh, MySQL database uh, on top of uh, RocksDB. So RocksDB is a, a key value store, the, which is a LSM, so log structured merge database. Uh, originally created by Google, uh, named RebelDB. So RebelDB was originally created for lightweight uh, kind of embedded applications. So Facebook uh, was pretty much impressed with uh, RebelDB and we wanted to use on the server side. So we forked uh, from RebelDB and added many features to run on backends, like uh, uh, multi-threaded background operations. So, MyLogs is basically using RocksDB as a storage engine. So uh, we, we are heavy users of InnoDB compression, so we use InnoDB. Uh, the purpose of the de development of the MyLogs was using uh, RocksDB storage engine to replace InnoDB. So we created RocksDB as a storage engine, then so all of the existing MySQL clients can uh, use MySQL database without changing application code. Since normally when migrating applications, uh, then uh, migrating client code is very time consuming. So we were uh, focused, we focused on uh, switching backend engines without changing applications. So everything is open source, so this is published as an open source project. And uh, it's distributed from MariaDB and Percona. So my looks initial goal at Facebook, so in InnoDB, we use InnoDB compression in main database called UDB. So as I said before, so we are pretty much constrained by space. 
So average CPU usage was pretty low, like 20%. And IO utilization was also pretty small. Right. So SSD was very fast, so it doesn't use much IO capacities. But uh, from space point of view, it's pretty much constrained by space. So used about 90%. So our objective of using Mirox was saving space uh, by from a B3 to LSM. So LSM was very space-optimized database. So our initial experiment showed that space could be saved to half compared to a compressed in ready. And still, it used CPU a bit. But from our workloads, uh, it, CPU and IO utilization was pretty comparable compared to in ready. Then, after saving space, uh, technically, it's, it could mean that we can put another MySQL instance in the same machine. So by running two instances in the same machine, in idea, so we could save the number of machines by half, so which was quite a big deal for us. So that's why uh, we started, uh, start, uh, started this project uh, with spending many resources. So Mylox features were, so since we were targeting to switch from InnoDB to Mylox, we tried to create as many uh, compatible features as InnoDB. For example, we decided to use a uh, cluster index format, which is same as InnoDB. And uh, technically, the LSM database like RocksDB is slower for reads and faster for writes. So, uh, slower reads, it's apparently a disadvantage. So, uh, RocksDB has several features to make read less slow, like a Bloom filters. So, we utilize these options. And we added support for transactions, uh, including consistencies uh, between Windows and RocksDB, so that even though the MySQL instance is crashed, it can be recovered. Since this is a very important feature for InnoDB, and we heavily rely on that. So we wanted that same feature in Mylox. So faster data loading is, uh, I'm going to talk about data. And so RocksDB ha has many tuning options, so hundreds of tuning options. So we used to uh, change the op option by restarting MySQL, so which was very painful. So we made uh, many options can be changed without restarting MySQL. So TTL is a time to live uh, feature uh, which was comparable to HBase uh, TTL feature. So uh, this means by specifying TTL, then any data that are older than time uh, can be removed without uh, like a deletes, manual deletes or dropping functions. So this made several DB operations a bit easier. And we added support for online logical and uh, binary backups, since we take logical backups for daily uh, disaster recovery purposes, and we take physical backups for uh, creating replicas. So we both heavily rely on th uh, these features. So we added for Mylox as well. Uh, Mylox versus InnoDB. So there are several advantages. Uh, uh, Mylox has advantages and uh, disadvantages. So let me go through. Uh, several points. So one biggest advantage of the Mylox is the smaller space. So from our uh, production environments, it's basically around half compared to compressed in ready. So most of our in ready deployments, are, we are using compressed in ready. So for almost all deployments, we have seen about half. So if you are not using regular, the compact, non-compressed in the format, you can save even more, like 3x or 4x, uh, smaller space. And it also uh, gives better cache hit rate because uh, its uh, space could be half. And lights are faster, so this is uh, LSM database's characteristics, so which means replication is faster. So the replication tend to lag uh, smaller compared to compressed uh, in ready. And uh, so another advantage is the bytes written to storage is smaller compared to InnoDB. 
like 10x or 20x smaller bytes returned to Flash is not uncommon. So since Flash is, uh, has a light endurance, so if you write too much to Flash, then the Flash burns out. So writing less is important. So if Flash writes less, then it might be possible to use more affordable Flash devices uh, as a database. And uh, Mylox disadvantages, uh, it lacks several features. So most notable one is that Mylox does not have a gap lock yet, so which means you cannot use statement-based replication. So we are using row-based binary logging uh, to support Mylox. And it doesn't have a foreign key or full text index or special indexes. And so these are missing. And uh, to make a better performance, it is, uh, it's recommended to use case-sensitive uh, collections. And these are slower, especially if every, all data fit in memory. So when you do benchmark uh, with all data in memory, then you get uh, slower results with Mylox compared to InnoDB. And uh, it's more dependent on file system and operating systems. So we use Mylox and LoxDB without all direct. So since LoxDB is direct I.O. support, it's very limited. So we use buffered I.O. So it's heavily depending on Linux kernels. So it's highly recommended to using a newer uh, 4.6 Linux kernels, uh, which fix many buffered I.O. problems. And there are many tuning options beyond buffer pool, such as broom filter or uh, compactions. So uh, we are trying to uh, give a best, uh, very good uh, default parameters so that uh, users don't have to worry about that. These are improper. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Talk about how we migrated uh, from InnoDB to Mylox in our main database. So first step was creating. Okay. First step was creating a. Okay. Okay. Fine. So first step was <laughs> creating Mylox instance without downtime. So we. Uh, this was pretty straightforward. So in MySQL world. So just pick, uh, pick one of the slaves, then stop the slave, then my, run MySQL dump.
second step was creating a second MyLocks instance without downtime. So this was pretty easy because the first MyLocks instance was ready. So uh, just copying another MyLocks instance, uh, we created a tool, an uh, online backup tool called the MyLocks Hot Backup, which is also open source. And uh, this, uh, we use this tool to copy uh, from a Mylox, first MyLocks to second MyLocks. The third step was promoting this as a master. So, okay, okay. So this was as easy as just change master uh, statement. So from a DPA point of view, it's just one, one command. But uh, from our deployment perspective, this was the hardest step because when my locks got fucked, then the data might be broken, bro corrupted. <laughs> That's a huge problem for us. So we tested a lot. So for example, we created an audit framework, uh, audit plugins uh, that captured all traffics, then uh, tested uh, replaying shadow traffic to a te test uh, MyLocks instance so that uh, to verify that data was not corrupted. So after verifying uh, several data consistency tests, then we could finally uh, make, make MyLocks as a master. Then the final step was just copying MyLocks everywhere. So, so our current, current production status is, so we completed InnoDB to MyLocks migration in our biggest uh, uh, UDB data, uh, database tiers and we could save 50% space in UDB so compared to compressed UDB. So we could achieve uh, original goals. So we started working on uh, migrating other large database tiers. So UDB is by far the largest database at Facebook, but we have several database tiers. So we are trying to uh, gain uh, benefits. So develop and load roadmaps. So I'm going to talk about what we are going to next. and. Uh, from a LoxDB development point of view. So we are trying to help MariaDB and Pelcon server to release with stable MyLox. So Pelcon server did uh, announce uh, earlier this year uh, that uh, GA version, the MyLox was released. So we are uh, helping MariaDB to do the same thing in the near future. Uh, from performance point of view, uh, matching read performance is most important. So <laughs> From an algorithm point of view, the so LSM is slower than V3, so we are trying to fill the gaps. So my colleague Mark Callahan did lots of benchmarks, and uh, we are uh, trying to make it better. Uh, I'm talking about supporting mixed engines and better replication and bigger instance size. So a mixed instance is basically a uh, goal is allowing people to run both in the and data is in memory. And uh, MyLox is uh, slower for these, uh, for the very small tables, but uh, it's much space efficient for big tables. So it's pretty reasonable that people want to use InnoDB for very small table and uh, using MyLox for the rest tables. So currently we, don't, we do not support these configs, but uh, we are trying to support in the uh, near future. So targeting MySQL 8. So there are several challenges, like uh, making online or binary backups support uh, both engines, or making sure that benchmarks are not uh, going bad. And the current plan is extending extra backup to integrate uh, MyLux hot backup. And uh, we are also considering uh, backporting uh, several MariaDB features, like GTID post auto engines, uh, to support uh, crash recoveries. Uh, beta replication. So beta replication is basically uh, most of the benchmarks like Pelcona or uh, Amazon is doing uh, showing that QPS, the right QPS, improves significantly when the binlog is disabled. So when enabling binlog, 
which is almost all production environments, then suddenly light QPS drops. So it's because the two PC of the uh, bean log and the engines. So we think this was mainly caused by two PC. So we are researching uh, if it is possible to use just one log, which means the binary log. So just using binary log and uh, not using log savvy right ahead log, uh, which is read log, uh, and uh, doing log savvy's recovery uh, from my in -ready. So by having uh, several format changes in the log savvy side so that it can read from a binary log, and uh, when my scale is crashed, uh, recovering a log savvy by reading from a binary logs. This, if this works, then this can significantly improve uh, right throughput. So this is what we started uh, researching. And parallel replication applies. Uh, yeah, it's basically MySQL uh, 8 uh, has a lot of progress, so we are uh, looking forward to that. So, and the LockSeb has several features to speed up even faster. For example, Roxy, my Rocks supports uh, not using internal transaction APIs, so which doesn't lock records. So this doesn't make sense on masters, but on the slaves, it should be fine. So we are trying to use that options on the slave side. The last part is uh, supporting a bigger instance size, which means, uh, so in most cases, even for us, uh, we shared MySQL databases. We have, as uh, the presented on the BTS talk and uh, several sharding talks, so there were several uh, MySQL, uh, many MySQL master instances, and it's sharded, then using a sharding framework like a spider or BTS. So this is uh, good if you have a specific purposes, but it uh, makes it harder to use several features like secondary indexes uh, or cross-shard transaction support. So what we are looking for is how about now the, we have a more than 10 terabyte flash storages, so why not just supporting a very big, like 10 terabyte single MySQL instance? then putting everything there. So you can use secondary indexes, and uh, you, can, uh, do you don't have to worry about distributed transactions. So these bigger instances may help several general purpose, the small to medium-sized applications. But uh, these have several challenges, like a parallel transaction, transactional MySQL dump, si since the MySQL dump from a 60 terabyte instance may take days, which is pretty painful for DBAs. So this has to be run in parallel, uh, parallel queries, or parallel copies, parallel DDLs, or resumable DDL. So if DDL is, is uh, failed after one week, then it's and from the <laughs> restarting from the beginning, then that's, that, that's really painful. And we have several uh, challenges, like a better join algorithm, uh, faster replication, or handling uh, many more connections and resource controls. From hardware point of view, uh, shared storages might be needed to support bigger storage. So there are many challenges, but uh, this is probably the next uh, interesting thing uh, what we are looking for. So th this is summary of my talk. So we finished deploying MyLox in our production user database, and we started deploying. Uh, you can start uh, deploying MyLox on slave side fast uh, with consistency check. After verifying it works, then let's uh, promote to masters. So we have uh, added many status counters or monitoring metrics so that people can easily use. And the more interesting features will come uh, this year. So that's all my talk. So thank you very much. Yes. So, so the uh, the question is the once uh, the uh, working with uh, Percon and uh, MariaDB release GA. So what will Facebook do? So we are not doing a software business. So uh, what we like to do is continue to push our features to open source and upstream 
which is a MySQL 5.6 GitHub branch. And uh, we don't expect uh, people to use the branch because uh, it's painful for people to maintain that. So we, we'd like to continue to uh, innovate and uh, push features to upstream. Uh, then I'd, we'd like to work with Pelcon and MariaDB uh, to take uh, the useful features, uh, relatively stable useful features to their distributions. So does it answer your question? <laughs>